There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. There are places to go beyond belief. The Interplanetary Podcast. The exploration of space for the benefit of all humankind. Your hosts here in England, Matthew Russell and Chris Carney. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby who baby is that? Moon. Who is who is it? I mean, it's a bit uh, of a mystery, isn't it? Can I can I uh, take a stab? Go on then. It's yes. Uh, Bear in mind, today's episode is about moon missions. Have a go. Yeah. Have a go uh, at who you think that quote's from. Uh, is it? I don't want to go too obvious, so but I'm going to do it. Is it, is it Neil Armstrong? <laughs> Damn, you've got it in one. Yes, amazing. Do you know what? Before you said about the moon thing, I was like, I was thinking it could be Sagan. It was a very Sagan quote, but mm. um, but yeah, Armstrong. What a guy, dude. Oh yeah, baby, Armstrong. Armstrong, <laughs> both strong in arm and in everything else. Strong in balls. Strong in balls, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the first podcast uh, that you first podcast of the year you've been on, Chris. Welcome Happy back. Happy New Year, everyone. Oh. The first podcast of a new millennium. The f- new millennium. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. Just a new yeah. year. Just a new year. It's not even a new century. I remember the good it's old nice. days when you woke up and it was a whole new millennium, whole new century, whole new decade. Those days have long and- gone. And Y2K had actually wiped out the entire human race and we now live in a simulation. simulation yeah, that's hence the Matrix. Mm. Weirdly, yeah, I, I, went to see, like I went to see Matrix at the cinema the other day, the new one. I'm not going to go Any into good? it. Do you know what? It was better than I thought it was going to be. The first half an yeah. hour I, was absolutely excellent, actually. Uh, but I won't go, okay. I, I won't, I won't divert. It's not a space film. It's good though. It's, yeah, it's, good it's not fun. a space film. Neither is Spider Man, although Spider Man has actually been to space in the most recent iterations of it. So, you know, maybe I can slot that in as that the the new Spider Man's very good as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, Dune, mm-hmm. but Dune has been excellent, and that is about space. Oh. You know, yeah, and, I've not seen it. I've not been to see that. Oh, yet. Oh, the Expanse this season of the Expanse. Ooh, oh, okay. But I'm going to wait for Julio to come on to talk about the Expanse because I know he's a massive fan. But probably should okay. now that it's finished. Um, uh, I thought we'd talk about the moon today, Chris. Oh, you know what? It's a great time to do it because it is big and beautiful in the sky tonight. It Absolutely certainly is. Amazing yeah, amazing sky tonight. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely enormous in the Guildford sky, just hanging there. Yeah, pretty full. Yeah, pretty full indeed. Yeah. Um, but of course, your astrophotographers don't like the moon because it bleaches out the contrast of the night sky. So it's not good for yes. everyone. It's not good for everyone. Not good for everyone. No. But uh, you know, uh, my, a couple of my friends have gone off to uh, uh, gone off to the to the coast to see if they can do a bit of aurora borealis spotting tonight because apparently there's a chance that never happens, does it? But no. apparently there's a chance they could see it. So you know, if you think there's a chance, you got to go and try, haven't you? Yeah. No, absolutely, <laughs> more. So anyway, I, I thought I'd talk about lunar missions because not just that the fact yeah. that the moon looks very pretty tonight, it's because I noticed there's an awful lot of lunar missions potentially happening this year. And we haven't, oh, okay. we, we haven't been for a couple of years and it's actually quite surprising, for example, how few times the European Space Agency's been, for example. <laughs> yeah. When, when the space race first started... Back in the 50s and 60s, well, yeah. 60s mainly, in the 60s, they were chucking things at the moon like nonstop. Uh, yeah. Uh, and with a few successes as well, you know. But um, they actually, I mean, okay, what year do you think the very first man made object hit the surface of the moon? Hit the surface. Okay, I'm going to go hit with. Hit the surface of the moon. 1965. 1965, you're way off. Am I? What? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Russians hit the moon in 1959 on the 12th of September. Oh, my goodness. It's always them, isn't it, though? It's always those Russians. Oh, well, well yeah, well, actually, other than the other than manned landings, Russia kicks ass. It yeah. really does. Back yeah. in the back in the day, the Soviet Union, I should say, not not just Russia. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, Luna Luna Two impacted on the twelfth of September, nineteen fifty nine, 
And yeah, but we haven't seen many uh, um, lunar missions. There was none, for example, in the 80s. Right. You just didn't and, and bother. We, yeah, like uh, there was, <laughs> there was one in the last one was 1978. Yeah, which was a NASA mission, and that was more like a sort of flyby of a on 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 route to a comet. Yeah, by ISEE three, the Ice Explorer fifty nine, and that and that only went round the moon just for a bit of you know orbital oh, mechanics, a laugh, for a bit of a fly. Yeah. But uh, well, yeah, for a bit of a laugh. But the uh, and then there wasn't another mission to the moon until the Japanese went off and had a, a again did a bit of a flyby, but yeah. ended up in a, in an orbit around the moon uh, back in twenty fourth of January nineteen ninety. So for the whole of the eighties, there was no missions to the moon. That they, whole the whole decade, the moon was like I used to have visitors, you and know. then it had none. Yeah, it's like, you know, 10 years without any visitors. If, if the moon was personified, it would be quite a lonely thing. <laughs> yeah, but the 60s, honestly, the, the amount of missions to the moon is just totally ridiculous. Yeah. Pioneer 4, I should I should say, actually, in the same year as Luna 2 hitting the surface of the moon, actually did go sort of near the moon. It was the first US spacecraft to leave Earth orbit. But it, it kind of went much further away from the moon than than it wanted to. So it was a bit of a partial failure, as they oh, say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But Luna 2, fully successful, hits the moon 1959. Boom. Then then uh Luna 3 did a flyby in the same year. So only a month later, well, less than a month later. Yeah. Then the Americans managed to hit the moon. In 1964, so that was quite close to what you said, 1965. Yeah, I was only thinking of America. I wasn't. I forgot about Russia. Yeah, I forgot about Russia being like five or six years ahead of of the of the Americans. Yeah, it's pretty. It's just uh, mad, isn't it? Like, and then all of a sudden they just sort of were like, America just raced ahead. It was just incredible. Well, I mean, yeah, they they kind of did, but only in the in the sense of human missions. Yeah. So, so for example, there's America catching up with their Ranger missions, which are a bit like the lunar missions, but the American version of the lunar missions. Yeah. Um, but the uh, what was the first spacecraft to orbit the moon? Like, okay, to so do a full orbit of the moon. And what, yeah, what, was first, it, what was it called or what year? What, what are we looking for? Well, what was it called and what year do you think it happened? Oh, oh, okay. And what nation sent it? Okay. Um, was it uh, Luna 10, Russia, 1966? Oh, 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 oh. well done. Luna 10, 1966. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Amazing. That, Check that notes. is genius. Check notes. Yes, fantastic. Uh, uh, right. Uh, but before that, we had the first successful landing on the moon. Yeah. Now, Considering what an achievement that is, the first, the first human-built thing to yeah. soft land on the moon, totally successfully, back in 1966. You'd be, you'd think it would be more famous than just Luna Nine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It just, it just, it seems like that. That should be. There is something. And I mentioned this last week, actually. There is something about the way that we talk about space. It's very American-centric. Yeah. And I feel as though, I I think we live slightly nearer to Russia, I guess. Uh, Yeah. And so so maybe we should should big them up. Although I'm not a fan of the uh, Soviet system. (laughs) No, I'm not a fan of the current administration <laughs> and i'm certainly not a fan <laughs> like, of the current administration <laughs> but let's not get too let's not get too political and of no. course Rog- rogozin is a complete and utter nut job mm. as previously discussed on on the podcast but yes. you know in some ways he's quite funny he's such a nut job but mm. but Bo- boris johnson used to be funny too when he was on have i got news for you but that's beside the point. I'm not going to let you. I'm not going to get let you run with that one, Chris. Okay, I was on my way with. I was on my way there, but yeah, okay. Right, let, yeah. Let's Whoa! rain it in. Back to the moon. Rain it in. Rain it. Uh, rain it in. So yeah. So the first American, the first spacecraft to orbit the moon, and the first 
spacecraft to land on the moon were in quick succession in 1966, both yeah. Rus- both Russian. So the Americans then man- la- managed to land in May, not long after. Yeah. G- pretty gutted, close, huh? Pretty close, but yeah, they were like just, just tailing was, them. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's much closer than the orbiting thing. So uh yeah, the, the and then after that you get basically lots of um lots of lunar 12, lunar orbiter 2, lunar 13, you know, all these missions keep going up and up and up and up and there's absolutely loads of them yeah. in the 60s. It's, it's like America. Yeah. yeah, it's like America and Russia became obsessed with going to the moon, like yeah. obsessed with it, right? And of course the really, 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 really big one after that. Well, you, you know what it is, don't you? You well, know what the really, really... Well, this is what we're getting really, into the Apollos. Is that what yeah. you mean? That's, that is yes. really, really big because it's the Saturn V. Yes. Yeah, so Apollo 8, 1968. Yeah. I mean, that it doesn't get much bigger than that, does it? No, still hasn't. <laughs> yeah, and, and the fact that they did it so that the dangerous engine burn happened on Christmas Day. Always mm. is quite surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone very, <laughs> very wrong. Blimey. Yeah, I, I suppose it's a bit like the James Webb Telescope being on Christmas Day. It's like, it's just amazing. Yeah, that was mad, wasn't it? I mean, it was just perfect because it was the best Christmas present ever. <laughs> God, that, and, and that's going really well, the James Webb Telescope. It seems yeah. to be full, fully deployed, and yeah. now it just has to do a couple of things. And when I say a couple of things, it still has to do like an engine burn to get into L2. So yeah, that's 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 a little bit stressful. Definitely. It's like, it's, imagine, imagine if it goes through all those things and, and everything's perfect, and then <laughs> the engine just burns incorrectly and just goes whizzing past where it's supposed to be. No! no! <laughs> <laughs> don't, please, please don't uh, do that. I and then can't the next wait was... to start seeing the results, you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, let's go back to the moon. Back, back to, the, to moon. the moon. Apollo 10, of course, that was um, 1969 also. Yeah. And the great, the great thing about Apollo 10 is that the capsule is in the London Science Museum mm. and is the fast fastest crewed vehicle of all time yes i've seen i've seen it quite recently actually in the in the museum beautiful thing I know. and then of course what's the date of the first moon landing <laughs> with um, crew on board just hold on a minute i think that would be uh 16th of july 19 no uh 20th of july 1969 it took off on the 16th <laughs> ah yes it landed on the 20th of july 1969 good nice spot Yes. Well saved. Yeah, good save that, wasn't it? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good save. And then it just goes on and on and on, and there's lots of missions to the moon. In the 70s, you get a few moon missions, including, obviously, up until 1972, a few of the Apollo uh, human landings. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, it start, I guess it starts to get a little bit boring uh, because you've just got, Really, up until this point, you've just got America and Russia just battling it out to see you can send those sort of things to the moon. And then they yeah. just give up in 1978. And like I said, it only restarts with the Japanese going. Yeah. With the with the Haitian mission and the Hago, Hagoromo mission. Yeah. That's 12, 12 years. 12, 12 yeah. years, yeah. With that, between 12 missions. years of, 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 of nothing. Yeah. And then of course you and then really the only lunar missions after that really are using the moon as as a flyby object and to get things to lagrangian points. Yeah. Like geotail, wind, mm. uh HGS. Uh but then um there is lunar prospector that was 98. Yeah. Uh which is, you know, a fairly decent a fairly decent moon mission. Yeah. Um, WMAP, which is one of the most important science instruments of all time, like mapping the, uh, you know, microwave background. Yeah. That did a fly, that did a flyby on its way to L2, which of course is where the James Webb telescope is sitting. Hmm. Uh, so that, that went there. And then not 2003 is really the first mission by ESA 
like the one and only mission I can find by the European Space Agency to the moon. Basically, <laughs> the Europeans, the Europeans, just simply not interested by the moon, which not is not bothered. even remotely, no. not no. even remotely interested by it. No. Unbelievable. No. They're just Absolutely got their eyes set on more important things. You know what I mean? They're just, you know, they go, you know yeah. what I mean? They're going to go off to Mars. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, yeah just go. Moon, yeah. The yeah. old business, old news, old I, news. I literally, they just literally can't be bothered to go. No. So that was a, that was a mission called SMART, which was a Swedish mission. Yeah. I know, I know you don't particularly like the Swedes. Yeah, you <laughs> do. I love the Swedes. <laughs> I love the Swedes. Yeah. The, 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 as uh, Kyra always says about Swedish, but she's, she's Swedish, but she's nice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and that, of course, like the James Webb telescope, flew on an Ariane 5. Oh, we love Ariane. And, and yes, that was crashed into the moon at the end of its little journey. At the oh. end of its at the end of its mission, yeah, and it was wow. manufactured by the Swedish Space Corporation. Small missions for advanced research in technology—that's what SMART stands for. Mm, that's a very. Mm. I love a good uh, acronym. There's nothing better than a good acronym. Oh, no. uh, and then, uh, then of course, Stereo, which is um, a NASA mission that that looks at the sun in Stereo. There's two of them. Yeah. Um, that that used a gravity assist. Then you have Artemis. Now, this is really a bit annoying that, um, that NASA called another mission Artemis. <laughs> Why did they do that? There's so many names that you could choose. Yeah, but they, but they, but they called the new Artemis Artemis and this one Artemis, <sighs> which is the two Themis spacecraft uh, that orbited the moon for a bit. Yeah. Then Japanese sent Selene, which of course is, uh, Celine which is another word. Yeah, which is another word for the moon. Or yeah. ka Kaguya, as I think the Japanese call it. And that deployed the Okina and Una satellites. Oh. Uh, which uh, impacted the moon at the end of the mission. Yeah. And Una is, is remains in some weird orbit. A Salino-centric orbit, no doubt. Uh, then Shangi-1 uh, went into orbit around the moon. China has entered the game. 2007. Yeah. I mean, that's the first entrance of China. 2007. It mm. just goes to show how far they've come yeah. since then. And yeah, then... It's pretty amazing. Two, 2008, beyond all kind of reason, the Indians managed to get Chandrayaan-1 there. Well in. That I mean, that is absolutely... Amazing. And the great thing about Chandrayaan 1 is it's one of the most important satellites ever because it's the one that really nailed the fact that there's water ice on the moon. Yep. Really nailed the fact that it's worth going back. So since then, there's probably been quite a lot more sort of activity of, oh, perhaps we should go back to the moon. Yeah. So, of course, you've got the Chinese now going quite a lot with Chang'e 2. You've got Changi 3 and, of course, Changi 5. Yes. Which, T1, which did, a, which did a sort of flyby mission, um, which was a sort of demonstration, uh, demonstration module. And then Luxembourg. <laughs> Luxembourg has entered the game. Lux <laughs> Luxembourg has entered the game, entered with the Manfred Memorial Moon Mission. <laughs> Lux space. Which, Lux space. And that, that was attached to Changi 5 T1. Mm. And then possibly one of my favouritest ever. Uh, well, actually, Tess, which which went up in 2018, you know. So we're we're now into the realm of of podcast territory when we're talking about these yeah. missions. Tess. Yeah. Tess obviously did a flyby, a great little gravity assess using the moon. Uh, then you had the little those little CubeSats mm. that went off with Changi Four um, to actually look at Changi Four when it landed on the far side of the moon. Yeah, so they're sort of out at a Lagrange point, the L two Lagrange point again, where where um, James Webb is going. Let's hope that they don't crash into it. Oh, that please, please just save James Webb. <laughs> Can we just not 
damage names web please it's just stressing me out so those two, <laughs> so those two little uh, satellites went out so that Changi 4 could communicate back with with Earth. That's really clever. And then, of course, we followed my favourite mission of 2019, which didn't actually work, and that was the Israel Bereshit uh, oh, lander that, it that, failed. That, that crashed into the lunar surface. Then Chandrayaan 2, uh, which was got into orbit, but the lander crashed at the very, very last minute due to a oh, software no! glitch. Now, we'll go back to Chandrayaan in a minute, but Chang'e 5 was an incredible mission at the end of 2020, Wonderful. if you remember, yeah. where they quickly went to the moon, grabbed a few lunar samples, and then came back just after the new year, which was they're incredible. Back. Yeah, they're just they're like, a, yeah, bish, just bash, do bang. it, get it done, get it done. Get it done. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, that that is a huge dem considering... You know, Changi One was 2007, and by 2020, they were bringing moon rocks back. That's, yeah. that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, incredible. What a what a journey. Well, it's just it's just insane. Yeah. So, uh, but so, why are we talking about it? I, I guess we should really get to the meat and meat sandwich el element of this. We Yummy. Get, we get into the we get into the meaty bit now. Yeah. Because now we're going to talk about the missions that are coming up. Mm -hmm. which are which are which is well i guess one of the biggest of the year it'll certainly be the most impressive launch of the year if it's going to happen now it's it's supposed to be in march but there's absolutely no way it's going to happen in march artemis one yeah well, of course we know it's not artemis one we know it's artemis two really <laughs> because it <laughs> yeah. was already it already was an artemis that went to the moon but anyway so yes <laughs> <laughs> NASA and ESA are yep. involved with this, of course, because like uh, ESA, ESA supplied part of the uh, the Orion space capsule that's going to go around the moon. Uh, yes. it's, it's an uncrewed test, so we're not going to see pilots going inside the Orion space capsule. But nevertheless, it's going to be super exciting. Definitely, and it's gonna, definitely, it's going to take it's going to take ten cubesats at the same time. But yeah, Artemis one being flown on the most powerful rocket probably ever. Right. And uh, it'll be absolutely ludicrous. I really want to buy a ticket to go and see that launch because it's, yep. it's, it's going to be absolutely crazy. However, that's, that's not it. That's not the only thing that's going. Because what? in March, th there's quite a few. There's quite a few missions going to the moon this year. It's 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 the sixties all over again. It I seems tell like you. it, yeah. And it's been fifty years since we walked on the moon. So you know what I mean. So it's, it's all building up again. So I feel as though this really does feel like there's a sort of bit of momentum building to get a human on the moon. Yeah. Which will be fun, won't it? Let's face it. Oh, my God, yeah. I want to see that in my lifetime, definitely. That'd just be wonderful. A human walking on the moon when I'm sort of conscious enough to actually, you know, appreciate it yeah. rather than being just under one <laughs> the last time it happened. So <laughs> there's a, a mission called Capstone, hmm. which is going to fly on Rocket Lab's Electron. No, it was gonna, yeah, it was gonna fly from Wallops Island, but it's gonna go from New Zealand. New Zealand enters the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so uh, that is going to be this this autonomous positioning system technology operations and navigation experiment. Capstone, oh, Capstone. That, oh, wait, oh, they don't come up with a cracker there, haven't they? Absolutely. They really have. That's one of the best. That's one of the best acronyms I've ever seen. <laughs> it's incredible. Capstone. <laughs> and, and, and capstone. It's a twelve-unit cubesat. So sort of twelve of those little boxes all stuck together yeah. in size. And it's going to what it's going to do is it's going to test a navigation system that that keeps a track of its position and it doesn't rely on the deep space network of ground stations. It relies on its relative position to NASA's LRO, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Yeah. So it's going to just keep looking at the LRO and going, oh, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> so it's going to navigate using its relative distance from another satellite. Wow. 
Yeah. So that was a $13.7 million spacecraft, and that's going up on a Rocket Lab's Electron. Nice. And that's that's possibly in March. That should that should be really, really cool. It's only an orbiter, so it's not gonna it's not gonna land. But there are going to be some things that land oh, yes. this, this year. So we've got um, in, in apparently the first quarter of the year, flying up on a Falcon 9, of course. Yep. It, you, you have a thing called Nova C, which, okay. is, which was selected back in 2019 as par- part of NASA's CLIPS, Commercial Lunar Payload Services. Yeah. Lunar clips, <laughs> lunar clips as lunar clips as one, uh, and it's one of the first of three landers that's going to go on that program. Yeah. So yeah, Intuitive Machines is the name of the company, and they got given seventy-seven million dollars for building and launching Nova C. Hmm. And Nova C is this little lander, and it will carry five NASA-sponsored instruments. And it will carry other payloads from other customers. So there will be a, an Eagle Cam, one or two Space Bit rovers. Oh, they sound good. And it will carry a thing called Doge One, which is, I believe, something to do with uh, Dogecoin. I've got f- two pounds fifty worth of Doge coins. Doge One is a geometric energy corporation CubeSat. Still good, uh, uh, but it's carrying quite a f- you know quite a few little different instruments, like the stereo cameras for lunar plume surface studies. Mm. So a whole bunch of science instruments are going up on that particular mission. So that's, that's very efficient. Re- that's very very cool. Yeah. That's very very cool. So that's IM one. That's called. So that is Intuitive Machines number one, the Nova C. Yeah, and then Russia apparently are carrying on their lunar missions, and they will have Luna Twenty Five, which is going to be a a lunar lander. Oh, and that's going to land in the South Pole at the Bogoslavsky crater. Yeah, another one. It keeps changing its name, and this thing's been going on for a long time. So don't be at all surprised if that one doesn't happen. No, but it'd be cool if it does. So I'm rooting for you, Russia. Roscosmos. See if you can do it. Roscosmos. Roscosmos. We've got another player entering the game. Do you want to do it? South Korea has entered the game. And that is CARI, or the Korean Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter. Nice. The KPLO. Kiplo. Kiplo. And that is a, yes, yeah, so that's an orbiter. And that's going to be surveying the lunar resources for things like water, ice, uranium, helium-3, excitingly, silicon mm. and aluminium. And it will also try and produce some form of topographic map. But that's part of a sort of much broader South Korean goal. I think the South Koreans realize that they're this huge economy on Earth, but, you know, in the top sort of five or six economies on Earth. But they're one of the few that don't have like a, a big space thing going on. Sure. So, yeah, they want to increase both the national brand value and national pride using nice. this as a specifically you know technical innovation and and sort of developing these crucial technologies for lunar exploration so i think that's really cool so we we have seen south korea enter the game yeah well they should already be very proud proud of themselves k-pop is amazing you know but you know yeah well but well they're obviously funding this from k-pop yeah pretty pretty much (laughs) from the literally from the song gangnam style like, uh, like <laughs> billions and billions of pounds on that. Yeah. I, I have to say, George has become obsessed with Korean ever yeah. since watching Squid Game. He's effectively learnt the language and, he's, and he knows how to read the highly brilliant um, written system that the Koreans use, which is one, you know, it's actually, it's one of mankind's greatest achievements, the Korean written system, just yeah. so you know. Right, I'm not know even that. joking. Yeah, no, it's 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 one of the very few that really kind of is designed from the top down rather than sort of just appearing as a mess. Yeah, which is <laughs> like most every, languages. Like everyone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whereas their written system is actually really, really cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so we've all been eating bibimbap and stuff like that recently because oh, George nice. has become obsessed, obsessed with Korea. 
Mm. So he'll be happy. He'll be happy Korean about barbecue. Uh, oh, mm. uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I do. Li- I do like Korean food. I've been getting a bit obsessed with it myself. Mm. Uh, then uh, J- uh, India are going to have another stab at it with Chandrayaan three. So this Go is basically a repeat of Chandrayaan two, um, but hopefully successful without the the glitch at the end. But they're not going to put an orbiter up with it this time. So it's literally just going to be a lander being blasted out to the moon and see if they can actually do it this time. It's yeah. actually been rede- redesigned. It's got less less um, rocket engines on it, yeah. less things to go wrong. But they're going to try and land it and, and get a little bit of national pride back yeah. after the disappointment of a few years ago. Absolutely. I, mean, I, I gotta believe in them. Go, go for it, India. You guys can do it. Japan have a have a company called iSpace, and this was part of the Lunar X Prize. And the fact the Lunar X Prize comes up quite a bit uh, with some of these. These were all things that were being built for the Lunar X Prize, and now have kind of made their way into this Artemis Clips realm. This is Japan trying to get uh, this Hakutu R Mission One, which is a lunar lander. It's not a rover, but they but this same company did build a rover. Yeah. which might go up on one of these other missions. But uh, this Hakutu R mission, it may actually take the um, the United Arab Emirates Has enters entered the, the game. game. <laughs> 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 uh, the, from, uh, has, so they've partnered with the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center yeah. and might, lo- and might uh, actually do their Rashid uh, mission one. Uh, which is um, at Lacus Somniorum. Mm. So they might take their little um, rover up with them with that, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Definitely. The, the, the Rashid Lunar Rover. So that will that may go along with it. Now, here's a big one. In the final part of the year, yep. we should see another uh, Intuitive Machines IM2 mission. So that will be one that takes a lunar lander, another Nova C, to go and start drilling for ice, the Prime 1 ice drill. Wow, wow, wow. So that is pretty cool. And I believe yeah. that comes from that comes from Canada. So the Canadians have entered the game. I'm not so sure about that, <laughs> but I think it does. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it, 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 the Canadians might enter the game. There's an exciting entering of the game in a little second. You, you'll you'll get really excited by oh, it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So Japan. <laughs> so Japan are going to go with a thing called SLIM. This is another good acronym. The Smart Lander for Investigating Moon. <laughs> <laughs> SLIM. That's good. SLIM. And and it's got. It, hopefully, it won't go to the dark side and become slim shady. <laughs> oh, Matty Russell, <laughs> joke of the week, uh, space <laughs> joke of the week. So that's going to take some, you know, scientific instruments and stuff. So that's an exciting one to look for. Slim yep. again in the yep. in the final part of the year. So because it can tra- uh, travel at high velocity, it's slim fast. Yeah. Now here's a big one, and we did talk about this at the time, I believe. On podcast 155, yeah. we mentioned this when it got the contract. And this is Astrobotic Technology wow. Mission 1. Mission 1! Wow. And it's, that, that's going to apparently fly at the very end of 2022 on a Vulcan. I find that hard to believe. Hmm. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like totally convinced by this one. But when this one happens, which it will happen, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's just, if it squeaks into 2022, I'll be I'll be chuffed. So this is the Peregrine Lander, and it's yes. going to be carrying a very big rover called Andy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even an acronym. <laughs> no, and a Unity, uh, uh, a couple of rovers, um, and then you know it will it will carry these Space Bit rovers as well. Now the Space Bit rovers, Space Bit Mission One of course, hmm. is what country? United Kingdom has entered the game. So, yeah, we <laughs> United Kingdom may enter the game this year in terms of what? going to the moon. That's yeah. amazing. I, 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 have you seen that in the press at all? I haven't. No. no. I haven't really. So it's not something that, that's like in the national conscious 
it's not it's not there yet, is it? No. So I so it should be quite exciting if if and when that happens. Mexico also enters the game. Enters the game because that they're going to get a ride sh- share as well with a little micro rover being yeah. carried on that. So that loads of different companies, uh, loads of different countries having little bits carried on the Peregrine lander. Yeah. Uh, part, part of this astrobotic. And again, that's part of NASA's CLIPS program as well. And right at the end of the year, Ariane 6 yep. may be taking the German lunar lander called Alina nice to the name. moon. And there'll be a few um, CubeSats on that mission as well um, and some rovers. So that should be pretty cool as well. And, and one of the one of the things that it wants to do is land very near the Apollo seventeen landing site. Oh, to so just have a little look, and uh, yeah, to have a little look and film the lunar roving vehicle that was left by Eugene Cernan wow. and Schmidt as they drove around on the lunar surface. So they they want to land near there and. Part of their mission is to preserve all these Soviet and American landing sites as world heritage sites. Oh, Although they should, moon they heritage. should really be called. Co- yeah, they should really be called off-world heritage, shouldn't they? Off-world heritage sites. That's really good because yeah. you've seen like it is getting so busy that yeah, that needs to be you know respected and needs to be yeah preserved. So that's that's probably my favourite mission out of them all. I think that's really yeah, great. and and the company that looks after all that is a company called For All Moonkind. Nice. <laughs> for All Moonkind. Uh, for All Moonkind. That's so good. They must have been made up when they came up with that. Absolutely. So, space bit, of course, might might go up on might go up before. By the way, yeah. On um, uh, so so UK may enter the game earlier than expected on one of those Nova Sea landers by Intuitive Machines. Fantastic. Who so knows? Who I knows? count uh, 15 missions there. Yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? Yeah. There's a lot of missions going on. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Absolutely. But uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty goddamn exciting, isn't it's it? It's the year of the moon. It is going to be the year of the moon. So how many of those do you think will go? How many of those missions do you think will end up going, do you think? Uh, 70% I'm going for. 70%? It's that a bit high. Hmm. I don't know. Do you know what? I absolutely don't know. No. I actually don't know. And of course, let's not forget, next year we might see the Dear Moon Project oh, yes. where Starship flies crazy... Uh, Japanese men around the moon. Now, I give that a 3% chance. I don't think Starship's going to be anywhere near ready for taking people around the moon in 2023. I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you on that one. I think 2025 might be um, might be doable. Yeah, I thought, mate, I, thought, I, I thought around 2024, but now it's 2022 and you're like, Ah, oh, 2024 is two years away. <laughs> it's not, mm. So yeah, I, I, I will give it. I'll give it 25 as well. And then, of course, we might be having some really exciting ones. So 2024, 20, 2025, we're talking things like Starship going to the moon. Yeah, Artemis two doing a uh, carrying doing an Apollo eight basically, and Artemis three doing an Apollo eleven, but this time taking the first woman to the moon. Yes. Yes, Queen. China, of course, might try nipping in. Who knows? They're keeping their manned lunar missions to themselves. They are, aren't they? Very, very secretive about all that. But yeah, it would be a it would be a boss if it was a bit like the For All Mankind episode, where it's just like we don't know until they're there. And like no, until it's there. And they go like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then of course the the Russians think that they're going in twenty twenty nine with a crude lunar flyby, a bit doing an Apollo eight. Do you think? Do you think they will? I, I wish them all the best, Matt, but it's not being great for them. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So good luck to everyone attempting yeah. to go to the moon. To the moon this year, it's going. It's a very exciting moon year. It is absolutely brilliant. I guess it's because it's. I guess it's because it's not a Mars year. I guess no one's going to Mars this year, so everyone's concentrating on the moon again. Yeah, yeah. Well, it deserves it. 
So out of all of those, I think my favourite moon mission of all time is Apollo 11. <laughs> What's yours? <laughs> um, Apollo 11. <laughs> 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 yeah it's 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 that's gonna be a hard one to beat isn't it really? it really is i don't think they're ever gonna really oh. top that unless you know the, you know like you know like they sort of had the first ascent of everest and then they like there was the first ascent without oxygen so maybe like yeah. the only way they're going to impress us is if they do like the first the first trip to the moon without a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> the first human-powered flight is yeah, like pedals, a pedal-powered uh, rocket. Then I'll be impressed. Maybe the first genetically modified human that can live on the moon without a spacesuit. Cool. Robo man. Robo man. <laughs> Robo man. <laughs> I love the idea of Robot Man. If any of you have this podcast would like to draw <laughs> Robo Man for us, that would yeah. be amazing. <laughs> yes. If anyone wants to send in their best drawing of Robo Man, <laughs> uh, it, there's an interplanetary podcast mug for you. Oh, yes. Brilliant. I'm going to do Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Give me your name. In. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can have a mug anyway. Oh, Christ, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Matthew. Um, I'm going to have to go. We let's keep this. Let's keep. The, let's not keep the spot cuts hanging on on our drivel. Yeah, that's a good let's, point. Uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's let's wish them a good week. Yeah. Bye bye spot cuts. 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 Bye spot cuts.